Well, hello everyone. Welcome everyone. <clears throat> Today, we aren't going to work on the Chevy, although we've got it sitting here ready. What we're going to do is we're going to replace the uh, defective uh, windshield wiper motor on the uh, Jamp 49 GMC and get that glove box uh, fit back in there. And we're going to take us another little cruise just for, uh, well, just for GP. So stay tuned as we take care of some of these things. Got a got a shipment in today that I've been waiting on, and here is a, a wiper blade and wiper arm that came with a new wiper motor. All right, he uh, this is a universal wiper motor for a uh, I believe it's 36 to 46 model. Chevrolet. That's with the uh, the uh, uh, what they call it Safari windows that kick out. Uh, I do not like this style. I don't. Uh, I really wanted to do something different with the GMC, but the problem is uh, with that uh, power brake booster uh, being firewall mounted. There's no way I can get the uh, vacuum motor and all the linkages back up there underneath the dash. So I'm having to go this route. Uh, I don't know if it was specific to that particular model of uh, a, a bracing that's underneath the dash for the power booster and the master cylinder, but in this case it won't fit. And this is the only paperwork that came with it, and it's got the same wiring diagram that I discovered online way back when I was troubleshooting when I was in it. So that's a good thing. I'll show you here shortly why I'm having to replace a part that I don't like uh, but let me show you another part I got here we'll put him this off to the side I remarked in a, in a video earlier I uh, can't remember which one it was that there was a band that went around the uh, the inside of the uh, glove box here that keeps the edges you know from falling in and keeps it from ripping well, I found an aftermarket provider that has it. All right, this goes that's upside down. And uh, I've only done some preliminary bending, and so far, at least the bottom holes and the side holes line up. So uh, I don't think I'm going to have to drill. So, but we'll see. But anyway, uh, now the OEM, actually the edge turns down a little bit. So it's a little better, but hey, this will work. And it even came with screws. So isn't that something? New screws. And there's the uh, part number and everything for it. All right, I've, uh, and from this same aftermarket provider, I got a new glass for the driver. Well, this actually, it's a one piece glass. It'll fit either the left side or the, ref or the right side. It depends upon the frame that you install the glass into that you then install into the door. The, the frames are, are side specific. In other words, the left side's only for the left side, the right side's only for the right side. But the, the actual glass itself is universal. Uh, by trying to do this, I'm saving over $100. And uh, so I'm going to, I've got a spare frame from all my wheeling and dealing. And I'm going to attempt to, uh, there's two screws I'm going to have to drill out. I tried to back them out with the Phillips and they won't come out. So I'm going to drill them out. I got uh, this same aftermarket provider had a, uh, had a screw kit to, so I can put it back together. And I'm going to attempt to put this glass in using the window setting tape I also got. Yeah, I guess I'll show you that. It seems really thick, 
So I think I'm going to have to cut it to fit. So here's the window setting tape here. And it goes actually in the channel of the frame. And I'll, I'll cover that deeply when I go to do it. And then it helps hold the glass in the frame. I guess it keeps the glass from, uh, from rattling around in the frame. And then the frame is then installed into the door. So anyway, we're, uh, we're moving right along with some parts. And this, the, uh, this is for the GMC. Uh, I'm, I want to get the... Uh, get it where if I get caught out in the rain I'll be able to uh, you know get home <laughs> all right here's the uh, here's the little screws that holds that goes into the frame uh, you've got uh, this is for two two frames there's two screws per frame and that's the part number four right there. But I'll, again, I'll cover this more de in depth when I get to it. All right. We're going to start by taking this 14 millimeter bolt off. Oh, the reason why I'm having to replace it is that rod pulled out. And uh, I was thinking I may give it a try first to try to repair it. And then I... Uh, went online and was doing some pricing and before I don't know where I looked at it but I did some pricing before and it was shown I came up with 150 to 200 dollars for that well uh, when I did this other checking I found out that it was a uh, 55 dollars so I figured 55 bucks. All right, no, why not, you know? So I may have to reuse that. Let me see, oh yeah, they put some silicone. I've, I've not got any silicone, I'm more, I may, I may hate that, I don't. Okay. Rely on this rubber to seal it. You know, I do have some Permatex type gasket sealer. All right. It's not too rusty there. All right. Now let's go to the inside. Keep using that part there. Okay. See, there's a quarter inch hole right there. Okay. And we'll put him there. And it just, it just comes in. All right, so that shows that big seal right there. Okay. That's pretty much what I've got here. All right. And a covering washer. There's no bolt up instructions that came with it, so we're going to feel it out. Okay. Yeah, the rod that's in it is definitely. Okay. That's going to be a problem getting that washer started in there. Okay. They had to be like Houdini to get that in there. It's going to take two bolts, practically. That's why they sealed it like they did. Must have hit that arm too. Alright. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. See, that'll come from the outside. See, see, all like that. Like that, I guess he does. Just like that, okay. Let's see. Still trying to cipher it out. I'm gonna go ahead and do the wires now and hopefully not get them mixed up. I'll tell you what, let's do one at a time. They'll be hard to get to. Once it's installed, and there's a uh, another trick I've seen why they've got two holes there, and why why I think they got two holes. Okay. Okay. the S terminal which is your switched ground okay. that's the ground there okay thought what's that third wire <laughs> negative terminal and the hot terminal which is color coded so I'm good to go all right I can take him down okay there's the negative all right. now it's gonna be fun getting that inside rubber gasket in there because the, uh, it won't fit through the other hole and it's not supposed to. So, I wonder if the original uh, motor came with install instructions. Because this certainly doesn't have any, okay. Because they're good and tight. Okay, now, what I need to do is, while I'm feeding him through there, I need to get that rubber grommet started through that larger hole onto the shaft. So, and I'm going to attempt to do it this way. Okay. If it'll go in there, and it won't. I don't know how in the world he did that. See, that will fit, fit through, but I may have to enlarge that hole. And that's what I'm going to do. Because I don't think, well, I think he had it, but it was cut off. And uh, so I'm going to make that hole bigger. Be right back. All right, let's see if I'm going to have any more success. Getting that thing started on there. I'm afraid. 
that uh, I'll lose it in there if I See him on the outside. Good deal. All right. Now we're going to move to the outside and put the screw in. Uh, kind of show you, I guess. I'm trying to let it focus, but you can barely see the tip of the uh, rubber, that rubber part sticking out there. Okay. So I'm going to set you down. I need two hands for this. All right. And then this, this rubber washer, and then this metal cap will go over top. Okay. And this is going to take some squeezing to get that dude started. Okay. Well, that's good in a way. Well. We want it to squeeze tight to make it watertight. We got a wrench around here somewhere. I gotta put the screw in. That's what this quarter inch does on the inside here. Keeps it from spinning. Turning out to be more, uh, thought it'd be a lot easier when it's turning out to be, but that's all right. Torquing the two clicks of the wrist. Uh, that seems to be in good. Let me look at my ground inside here. Much rather it parked over on the other side, but uh, I have it at least it works. All right, now if I get caught out in the rain, at least I got uh, a little something to work for me anyway. All right, well, there, there he is. To be totally truthful with you, I, I'm really not happy with this solution, but it's about the only solution I can come up with, uh, time frame wise. 
and money wise so it'll do for now but i can uh i can see where you know i may look into those they have electric motor conversions for these things i may look into that too i don't know the uh when i do put the uh uh the uh roof liner up uh headliner here it will i'll have to cut around the motor but it'll come all the way down to the uh garnish strip here so it'll cover all this all this will be covered and uh, all this in the wiring so anyway it'll may look better uh i hate seeing that it's kind of i hate seeing that sitting there like that but what well, there's not much you can do got to have some kind of windshield wiper so anyway one down, a hundred to go. What year is this victory, Chuck? 2013. 2000? Vegas 8-Ball. Vegas 8-Ball, okay. And what are we doing, Ted? We are replacing the factory exhaust system okay. with a Stage one exhaust system. Oh. Okay. I'd show the aftermath instead of all the trial and tribulation but anyway I had to redrill the, uh, the three bottom holes lined up fine the four top holes didn't so I had to uh, redrill the uh, the band to line up it, it didn't even line up with the cardboard uh, glove box so anyway so that's what the band looks like installed now the cardboard does stick out more in some places. I guess I'll, I could run an X-Acto knife or something down and trim that up. But to tell you the truth, I'm not overly concerned with it because you don't see it. <laughs> so anyway, the spring is wore out on this thing. I've squirted some uh, 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 silicon spray, silicone, silicon, whatever, spray on it to see if it would loosen it up. And on the locket mechanism here, and he seems, see if he pushes him all the way, he doesn't engage. So pull him back a hair, and there you go. So anyway, I played around bending the tab some, and uh, I just made it worse. So the happy medium is to, you know, when I go to open it, you know, that little gap there, kind of pull it out a little bit, and there you go. So anyway, now, it might be all for naught because I may end up putting a radio in there. I don't know. I got to wear uh, cruising it. I got so used to it with the Chevy that uh, having uh, some tunes that I kind of want a radio. But uh, that's way down the list of uh, necessary items. Boy, that's stuck too. So we got, I think we still got lots of stuff to do. So anyway... That's the glove box reinstalled. All right, as for a comparison, this is the Chevrolet glove box trim. And see the band here, it's turned down. Now don't pay too much attention to that's the original glove box that's still in this thing. And it's, uh, I've got a duct tape in a couple places, but it's in pretty rough shape. Shine some light here on him. 
but you can see the band it turns down at the edge and it fits a lot better so you know I mean the aftermarket at least it is uh, viable and it is you know capable but if uh, just to show you you know the quality difference between the original equipment the OEM part and uh, what you get in the aftermarket and uh, also in this corner here of the windshield this is the Chevy you can see where it's leaked let me put the light down a little bit if I can you can see where it's leaked here and uh, here in that corner and where it's cracked you know and I had the exact same kind of cracking on that GMC I'm just you know it's crazy how some of this stuff works but anyway I just wanted to show that as a comparison OEM to aftermarket back out cruising the GMC again topped off the gas figured out my gas mileage got about 14.7 mile per gallon on that last fill up so I imagine it may get better hope this guy doesn't come out I ended up putting the screaming skulls mirror back in uh, it uh, I'm going to replace it but I wanted a mirror up there and I uh, figured out the clock on this uh, GPS speedometer. And you don't set the clock per se, you set the time zone. It gets its time from the uh, satellite. So that's satellite time sitting there on it. But anyway made us a little dump run and we're going to uh, go down here and get us a little bit of Bojangles for lunch and then make a few more stops and then head out on a nice little country road cruise. engine 
and it sounded real sweet at about 2,500 to 3,000 RPM. Well, this small block Chevy's in that same category. It's up there. Can't really hear it that good, but uh, I can. I doubt the video is picking it up though. Almost need a remote mic. Mother thoughts. This truck definitely needs sway bars. It would handle a whole these cur curves a whole lot better with some sway bars. And I believe they make them for these straight axles. I'll have to look into that. Because uh, my my area, my uh, AO area of operations is definitely curvy. So that would uh, that's a need. My dashes with this big steering wheel, my uh, dashes, my gauges down there with this big steering wheel are, are hard to see. I've got to look above or below the, uh, uh, the one of the arms here of the steering wheel to uh, see them. So it's uh, motivating me to want to get these uh, OEM gauges working, which I believe I can. I consistently run over 30 psi so i'd have to get the uh zero to 60 gauge and i believe this uh the temperature gauge will be all right it's, uh, it's 122 and uh i think that'll be fine because i don't ever get but get up that hot anyway now i get above 100 i get about 110 when i'm idling like in a uh a lot of red lights or uh in a fast food restaurant but uh yeah, I'm kind of getting motivated to uh, maybe get those gauges working and uh, either free that space up down there for a radio or move that GPS speedometer right, and center it right here on this. Now, I don't know. Well, that would kind of look Mickey Mouse, but, you know, I probably look a little Mickey Mouse now anyway. These screaming skulls up here, the mirror is mounted too high, so it's really not good for any, it's good for anybody tailgating, maybe other than that, it's not really that good. So that's just another reason why I need to uh, get rid of them. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, uh, you know, once upon a time, way back in my Marine Corps days, I may have, uh, we, we've been into uh, skulls and all kinds of other stuff. But them days is long gone. I, uh, you know, that's Halloween. You know, maybe I'll save it for Halloween. But it can be gone. I did get uh, get in a rainstorm, and I got in on the rain. I uh, got in some rain on the interstate. And that wiper, it worked. It kept it clear enough for me to, uh, to keep driving. So that's a good thing shame it's only that one speed so my hatred for it's kind of diminished some now that i had to use it and, uh, and it worked so that's a good thing now even though this 350 sounds good this small block chevy sounds real good yeah i'm kind of missing my tunes i need to come up with something on the parking brakes of course, the glass, got to do something about it. Uh, you know what, that vent window is actually throwing some good cool air on me. We're, in, we're sitting here in the 80s. This is the craziest weather. Not to change subjects too much, but you know, we go from uh, you know 40s in the morning to 80s in the evening, afternoon. It's, it's a 40 degree swing. That's really crazy. Maybe uh, tell Al Gore to turn this stuff down some, you know? <laughs> Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna avoid that. <laughs> Again, I'm really thinking, you know, if I were to go the route, you know, depending upon how I'm gonna go with the radio on this thing, you know, if I'm gonna get a radio that'll fit in that slot there, then it's gotta move, or if I'm gonna move them gauges down there and put the radio down there, so I don't know. I've already decided I'm not gonna sacrifice the glove box. I like the glove box, I'm gonna keep it. Anyway, that's a lot of thoughts. Well, when I ran it up 
the 91 or whatever it ended up being, I didn't really notice my tack. Hopefully, it, uh, I recorded what the tack was doing. Probably around 4,000 RPM be my guess. I don't know. We'll see. to bring this video to a close uh, we're uh, we're getting real close to getting uh, getting on that Chevy the 49 Chevy I've got uh, 3,000 mile service to do to it got 6,000 mile service to do to it I got a 10,000 mile service to do to it and a 25,000 mile which is basically just changing out the front brakes and I'm going to cover that uh, changing out uh, the brake pads on those hook brakes and uh, so you can stay tuned for that that'll be upcoming I've got a few more loose uh, loose items to tie up on this GMC but uh, right now uh, other than just uh, keeping it going uh, that's uh, that's about what I'm gonna end doing with this and we're gonna get back concentrating on the Chevy uh, I kind of like to have radio, but uh, other than that, uh, get this glass, you know, somewhat situated. And perhaps I'll put a one-piece window in the, on this passenger side. I've got a window installed in the frame. It's serviceable, no cracks. I mean, there's a little bit of a delamination on the edges, but it's in good condition. And uh, so I just need to make up some bracing and brackets that goes inside the door for that. Uh, and I'll have to study on that more. Uh, but the first, uh, 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 the first business I'm going to take care of is changing out the glass pane in a frame that I've also got spare over there. And that's going to be fun, from what I understand. So anyway, a lot of stuff still to do. And uh, so I want to thank you for watching. If, uh, if you enjoy this kind of stuff, uh, uh, if you ain't got nothing better to do and you're watching this, well... Uh, Give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe if you haven't, uh, both of those will help me out with YouTube and won't cost you a thing. Uh, give me a comment, I enjoy hearing from you, uh, and uh, you know, my way certainly isn't the only way and certainly isn't the best way, I've always opened uh, suggestions. So, and uh, this coronavirus stuff, looks like we're, uh, we're really starting to get back to normal. Uh, the schools were, from what we're hearing now, are going to start back in uh, in the fall, just like normal. Uh, restaurants are open now. Uh, pretty soon, our barber shops and everything else will be opening up. So anyway, uh, it's a slow kind of process, but we're getting it done. Hope hope all's going good in your area. So thanks for watching. Take it easy, and we'll see you around. See. You.